I always saw like acting as a hobby. Like it was just like a fun thing that I do, you know. So how did you get into music then? I just, just always done both at the same time. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So how did All American? I'm just okay, I'm, I'm so getting to know you at this point. All American. I got a new agent when I graduated from high school, mm -hmm. and I was auditioning for like a year and booking nothing, and um. Yeah, and then I just I got an audition for All American, and as soon as I read it, I was like I I was like I I kind of already knew I got it because it just I resonated with the character so much, um yeah, and then I submitted it, and then they reached out to me like two days later and was like we need to be in L A. Yo, this video is sponsored by Los Hermanos, and it's crazy because I always wanted to have a uh, tequila sponsorship. So shout out to my guys over at Los Hermanos for taking a shot with me, doing this partnership thing. I really appreciate it. Listen, I like it so much, I might just be worse than uh, Rick Ross, bro. So if you see me on the gram posting it all over my story and my gram, don't say nothing. Just go ahead and buy a bottle. I got it by the case. So look, we got the Blanco. We also got the Repo. And you know, my favorite is in Yeho, right? We got it on the way, you know. Like I said, we got it by the case, man. So listen, if you in Delaware, you in Georgia, you in Maryland, you in New York, you in Jersey, make sure you go to the nearest liquor store and ask for some Los Hermanos. Hey, my guys. Although, I'm not going to lie, I feel like you big ones with EX. Mm -hmm. I do feel like, and I'm, I am I feel bad for feeling this way because I'm a man, and I just feel like society put this, this stain on men who believe in Zodiacs. Yeah. But I feel like... I do feel like um, Zodiacs, I'm not even supposed to be to say this because I'm a Christian, mm. but like I feel like Zodiacs be real, like be right. They are very real. And I think that they're attached to the Bible. No. A hundred. Because mm. listen, look at this. Isn't the whole story about how they found like baby Jesus and stuff in the, based off the stars? And that's how you find your big three is calculating the stars. It all kind of ties back into it and it and I don't feel like it can be like against it because it's literally the study of like the stars and the moon and like your location you know what I mean like, I yeah think, I understand that like but when I, you're finding your big three you put in your where you were born mm -hmm. and then like the time you were born and that sounds like your love path you ever heard of that your love path mm -hmm. what is that? it's like a path like a love path number life life path oh I I've, think I've heard of that I just I learned about that like not too long that? ago it's I don't know I can't explain it he, he might can explain it but it's basically figuring out what time you was born and mm -hmm. it tells you a number and that number tells you about yourself. Oh, I think I did that before. Like in the middle of the night, mm. randomly. What's your life path number? I don't know. I think it was like one or something. I don't know. I think mine is like a four or something like that. Oh. Ironically, I love the number four, but whatever. But I was saying, I think like as a Christian, you're not supposed to really tap into that stuff because in the Bible it says you're not supposed to put any other gods before our God. And but how is I that mean, putting a God before... Mm, like what Zodiac, god is zodiac worshiping because it's like you're you're listening to what a zodiac says about your life when it's really supposed to be a god it's supposed to be about god i mean it's not it's not listening to what it says it just kind of tells you about yourself based off of circumstances like i don't think it's like you're worshiping the zodiac sign it's just like learning more about yourself you know what i mean like it's like kind of just the sit like kind of similar to just like where you were born. Like, it's just, I don't know how to explain it, but I don't think it's worshiping anything. I think it's just learning more about yourself. All I'm going to say is... Based I, off, like, circumstances. I think that's cool. I'm not the Christian that would argue you about this, but it's a group of Christians out there. I mean, of course. There's a group of argue. Christians that argue about all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. You could find a group of Christians that would, you know... You can find a group of any type of people <laughs> that will argue about anything. That's so. a fact. That's a fact. That's This is true. This is true. Yo, let's get into this podcast. What's up? <sighs> My bad. What's up, everybody? <laughs> it's your boy, Mr. J. Hill. J. Hill Podcast. We are in the building. Uh, shout out to my guys at Los Hermanos. Black-owned tequila. Ba Black-owned tequila. Based in Baltimore. But we are in five different states. Uh, Washington, D.C., which I don't think is a state, but whatever. Washington, D.C., Delaware, Georgia, New York, and New Jersey. So make sure you go to one of your liquor stores that's near you in one of them states and you cop you some Los Hermanos, you know, celebrate 
black business. You know how it is. We got special guest Journey Montana in the building. What up? Hey. Hey. I feel like they already got an introduction. You know what I'm saying? But I might cut all that. So they might not have seen none of okay. the movies we just talked about. But they might. You never know. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. You said you wanted to try this. Okay. Tell me. Listen. What? You're Scorpio. Mm-hmm. So you can give it to me straight. Ah, 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 ah. No chaser. No pun intended. However you feel about it, you don't know these people. So I want you to be completely hungry. Okay. Well, okay. honestly, I'm like it's, it's okay. such a girl when it comes it's to like... It's fine. So say whatever. Or... First thing that came to your mind. It's okay. I probably would... Okay. It's okay. I honestly would have that reaction with anything. Uh, that's actually not that bad. Mm. That's not that bad. It's kind of sweet. Mm. I, that's actually not that bad. I, I, I'm not lying. I, I literally, I have the same reaction, that little face, mm-hmm. but any alcohol. It's too. alcohol. Yeah. It's, Lo- it's alcohol. That's my reaction. Los Hermanos. You know? Yeah. Support black businesses. But yeah, how you feeling, man? What's going on? I'm feeling good. I'm in Atlanta, you know. What brings you to Atlanta? Lots of stuff. I have a show tonight, mm-hmm. and um, I'm. Well, it would have been like because by the time we drop this date, I ain't gonna be there. But whatever. Well, that's what I'm here for. I have a show. Okay. And I'm promoting my single, um, "Journey." Should be out now by now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's working. When you drop a single, "Journey," I feel like you're 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 on a rise, right? Like mm-hmm. you're up and coming artist. Yeah. You drop a single journey. I hit well, the first thing that comes to mind. I'm thinking like you know the journey to success or the journey to wherever you are now. Mm-hmm. But in your case, like you're on a come up. Yeah. So like as a consumer, I'm like, what journey? What journey? What journey am I listening to? What journey am I looking for? Mm-hmm. Well, the song is named after. It's like self titled. Mm-hmm. Um, Camper DJ Camper produced it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were in the studio and he was. He just did something with Coco. Coco. Yeah, Jones. he just won a Grammy with Coco Jones for okay. ICU. But yeah, we were in the studio and he played it and he already had like an idea when he came with it. And he was like, You should like introduce yourself. And I was like, That's genius. And then I just did it like kind of off the dome. That is fire. Yeah. Because it's not journey as of like a journey of where I've been and where I'm going, but yeah. it's actually just a introduction. But actually, it's both. It's like a double entendre. Like it's both things. Like it's journey. The first line is, my name is Journey, but it's also talking about those things. Like, I go through, you know, each phase of my life and, like, mm. explain it. Yeah. And it's the first time I'm, like, talking about my grandfather and, like, my grandparents on a song. Why is that important? I mean, because I didn't really grow up with my dad in my life, but my grandfather kind of, like, was my father figure. And then he passed away. Mm, I'm actually. sorry to hear that. Yeah. That's your first time ever talking about him? Yeah, like, in a song. Why? Like, publicly. I mean, it's just personal, you know? That's the thing, because I feel like, I was telling you this before, like, I've been making F-Girl music. And, like, of course, that's, like, relatable to an extent. But, like, I think just getting more personal and, like, letting some of those walls down will make, like, a difference. And, okay, being vulnerable. Yeah, just, like, letting people actually get to know me. Um, so when you say you was making F girl music, I, I mean I don't know what F girl music is, but I'm assuming like what like real ass give a f- about a nigga. Yeah, that's kind of F girl music. Yeah, like F girl music, like fuck niggas get money. Okay. Like beat. <laughs> what, what, what took you? What took you down that lane? I was mad. I went through like a really bad breakup because it's crazy. I didn't used to like curse or anything in my music, mm-hmm. and I had a really bad breakup, and I was like cursing every time I was in the booth. Like I was like cursing somebody out and. Um, honestly, like literally how it happened was we were like going back and forth, um, sending paragraphs and like, I don't know, you're a guy, but like sometimes guys, when you're sending paragraphs, you'll send them a whole thing and they'll reply to like one sentence Mm -hmm. in the whole thing. So you, you know what I'm talking about. And he did that. And so I was like, I'm gonna just put this in a song. And then I sent him the song and then he finally like listened to it. So he, I I would have just dropped a, uh, a diss track. A diss track. I mean, it low key was a diss. No, track. I would uh, if I was him. Him. You sent me a song about me. I'm sending you a song back. Okay, no, he didn't do that. But honestly, I did peep. He he made a song about me now. And I saw him perform it at a show, and like the call and response was like, "On three, say f that bitch, f that bitch." And I was like, "What did I do? We can yeah." What's his name? I'm not no. 
Absolutely not. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's an artist. He's a rapper. Yes. Oh, shit. All right, bet. Okay, cool. All right, hold on, hold on. All right, all right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, bet, bet, bet. All right, so I get three guesses. Okay. All right, bet. You got to give me some hints, though. No. No? Is he no from New York? Hint. No. He's a young rapper, like... He's young, yeah. But your, your audience already know who he is. Some. Some of them. He's lit? I don't know. You know if a nigga lit or not. Define, you know if somebody define, lit. Define, define lit. Define lit. I definitely feel like karma came because when we stopped talking, I feel like he definitely fell off a little bit. Fell off rapper. Okay, cool. There's a lot of those. <laughs> ah, shit. Uh... It's not little bit. Sorry, let me stop. Yo, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, are we doing this? Okay, <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> You're dead serious. Wow. My bad. It's the first podcast. I'm sorry. I just don't know. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. I apologize. Shit. Like, damn. My bad. Um. Okay. So you you dropped that song because it's about your, your boyfriend. Ex. Yeah. Your ex boyfriend. Mm -hmm. But you're in a better space now. Yeah, exactly. But you're in a better space. But look at this. Look how crazy this is. You're in a better space. And now you decide to talk about your grandparents, one specifically who passed away. Yeah. Who's really close to you. Mm hmm You see how fucked up as a culture we are? How? Because that I'm assuming that that had to take you to a space of like grieving. Like that's that's somebody that that raised you. That's your But I feel like it's more like homage. Like it's like showing love. You know what mm. I mean? So that didn't hurt to make. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I did shed like a tear or two recording mm -hmm. it. But like, it was like from like a good place, like a closure place. Like, you know what I mean? That's fire. Yeah. Not like in a, not in a weird way, but like in a respectful way, I did it. So you think the music got you to closure? Um, no, I feel like I got myself to have a little bit of closure with my, with my family, like with what I'm talking about in the song. Yeah, I think, granddad, that yeah, yeah. I think that that played a part, but like me getting there, I did a lot of work on my own, like, personally, like, kind of close out that, like, angry chapter. What was you angry about? I was angry about, like, I feel like I've always been, like, a lover girl. And I kind of, like, I don't know. It kind of, like, backfired a bit. We still talking about your ex. Yeah. And so that's okay. what made me angry. I'm talking and about. And then I progressed. And now I'm, like, focusing on myself. Because my whole thing is, like, I feel like I was talking about this thing and that thing and that person and that person. And then. Now I'm only left with myself. See, I'm talking about making this song about your granddad, right? Yeah. He passed. This mm -hmm. is my that raised you. So it essentially it's like losing a dad. Yeah. And I'm assuming that would hurt. So when you yeah. make the song about your dad that passed, I'm like, you go from one trauma, right? Or one pain to mm -hmm. talk about another one that will have to open up some, some doors to some more pain. Yeah. I mean, honestly, though, it wasn't really... Of course, it was painful. It was hard losing him. But he was sick for a while. Okay. So we kind of knew. And, yeah, it was a little bit different. Like, um, I feel like I kind of came into it when it all happened, like, at peace with it a little bit. Hmm. But, yeah, I think it was just just being respectful and, like, you know, pay, like I said, paying homage. How do you think the um your audience reacted to that song? Because you said you went from making F-girl music, right? Like, turn up, like, fuck these niggas, get money, you know, like, suck my dick, all that. To being super vulnerable, talking about real life instances, um, getting in my business, right? Mm -hmm. How did you see the audience react to that? That change? Did they like it? Yeah, yeah. I think that they were um, happy to, like, learn more about me. Hmm. It was a lot more, you know, personal and, like, transparent and things that people wouldn't really talk about in a song hmm. like even the format of the song like introducing myself and being that you know transparent it's it's different so but you told me how you did it like the, you link with dj camper he had it but i'm still curious of why because like if you if, if you're making something and it work right like mm -hmm. they say if it works if it's not broken don't fix it right yeah. so i'm trying to figure out why did you shift like if it was already working why why do that why change from turning up to Super vulnerable, let's cry together. I mean, because I just grow as a person and I write all of my music. So it's like a direct reflection of mm. me and who I am. So if I'm in this space, then I'm going to be talking about these things and so on and so forth as I'm as I'm changing. So 
like I said, I was doing a lot of personal work and I was changing as a person. So like I, I couldn't make the same type of songs that I was making two years ago right now. Like I, I just am not the same I'm not the same person. Mm. So I think that's that's really why. It was just like it didn't and I make I make my music to really like express myself and, you know, almost treat it like a like a diary and like it's always very personal. So if I'm in a certain headspace, then my music is gonna reflect that always. Mm. How do you like the space when it comes to like just the industry and the music? Like, do like, you just the people that you have to work with, the people you're around all the time? Like, I seen your Instagram, you got you like you're going crazy. You got numbers, you know what I'm saying? So it's only a matter of time. So I'm just wondering, are you enjoying this space? Yeah, yeah. I love the people around me. I have a good team, great team. I love them very much. And yeah, we're just having fun with it and vibing and keeping it going and being, you know, real. Mm. Yeah. So you haven't really like encountered the industry like that yet. I have. I have encountered the industry, but I feel like I've always been in like a bubble and that's why I'm very very like careful about who I have around me because there's so I feel like in every industry has this like there's dark parts. Yes. Of every industry. Yes. So you just have to like, you know, take care of yourself by being mindful of who you have around you. Because that makes like a world of a difference. I've been around people, like hung out with other people and like seeing their team and who they have around them. Like that's why their life is so hard. And that's why they have they're having these experiences in the industry because of who they're keeping around them. Like it's so important. So I think because of that, like I'm just I'm really careful with like who I call my friends, who I call my team, like who I have around me on a day to day, like because it makes such a difference because people will try to kill you. <laughs> that's not that's a fact, but not not to not to dwell on this like um Zodiac stuff, but you know it's funny, like that's the one thing that I uh I noticed about like Scorpio mm -hmm. is like the sense of boundary that you guys set. Yeah. And like that's something as a Gemini that I always felt like I lacked, like having boundaries, because like I'm just so like just just come in, let me help you. Everybody. I agree. Right? Yeah. But I feel like Scorpios what from my experience, like have a like, super good at, like, nah, these are my boundaries. Mm -hmm. You're not going to cr cross my boundaries. And I think that helps, especially in the music industry, because mm -hmm. I asked you, how do you like this space, right? And the first thing you say is, like, I love it because you can, you're talking about your circle because mm -hmm. you can control that. Yeah. And I think that's so dope. And just even for, like, other, like, we could use this as a learning moment for, like, other artists who might be up and coming. Mm -hmm. Because it is, it's kind of what you make it. Yeah. Right. So is. if you allow anything into your circle, then your circle is going to be disgusting and you want to not like it. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why my experience is like it is because I hate all of these niggas. But <laughs> I'm just saying like, oh, gosh, <laughs> it just is what it is. But when I ask you, the first thing you say is, no, nah, I love it. My circle is good. And yeah, I think people can learn from that. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's fire. You have to be careful with your energy. But what about up? This one devil's ever getting there. You're going to need some f features down the line. You're going to have to work with some people that you might not want to work with down the line. I mean, but you don't have to, like, be around somebody to do features. Not always. Okay. There's ways to do that. But, like, honestly, I don't think I would do a feature with somebody that, like, was bad. And, like, I feel like it, it's definitely something over time, like, that they would, like, their energy would seep into yours. Like, that would take time. I feel like one link up... I've had some sus link-ups, I'm not going to lie. But, like, that's not my circle, so I don't think it, you know what I mean? You could just, like, go and then take a step back. No, I do. I understand. Yeah. I get it. But mm, let's get back to this. You said that you said that you wouldn't um, do, like, you wouldn't do features with a bad person. Yeah. Even if the music is really good. Yeah, no. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. How do we determine who's bad and who's not bad, though? I mean, I mean that's subjective. But, like, if I consider somebody, like, somebody I wouldn't want to be around or somebody that doesn't align with me and, like, you know, morally, et cetera, like, I'm just going to not. I was thinking so somebody, many, but so I ain't going to say that name. Oh, you about to say somebody? No, I'm not. Okay. But, I was, but no. <laughs> but, yeah, there's so many artists. It's not that deep. Like, if there's somebody that I'm like, this doesn't make sense, I'm not going to force it. Mm. Yo, listen to the, the quick listen that I did to your music. The one thing that stood out was the instruments. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, you play instrument? You no, like, you... but I like instruments, really, into the production side. I like co-produce a lot of my, my music. So you hard to work with? 
<laughs> I'm not hard to work with. I'm just like um, particular. Yeah. Hard to work with. Hey, I'm hard to work with. I mean, I co produce everything. Like, honestly, I, be... I feel like I'm not hard to work with, though. I just feel like, like, I try to be really respectful and like easygoing because I've been around people who are hard to work with. What's hard to work with? Hard to work with is like, um, you need hot pink toilet paper and all green Skittles. That's extremely hard to work with. Okay. And I, there are artists like that. Okay. See, me, I'm more so like, I need to see everything because I think, like, I've, I think what with success comes uh just partic- particulars. Yeah. Right? So like I have a way of doing things and I have to be able to be able to trust that you can do this. Yeah. And in order for me to trust that you can be able to do this, we gotta work together for a certain amount of time. I gotta I gotta see that you can show and produce how I like it, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's nothing wrong with that, but I do I can see how that can be annoying for some people. Yeah. I mean, I think that's just being good at what you do. You know what I mean? And that you care. Because if you don't care and you're not going to pay attention to the minor details, then who is, mm. you know? That's a fact. That's what you're supposed to do. That's why I don't t- I don't really take it as like being hard to work with. If I'm listening to something and I'm like, I don't like that, let's change it to this. Like, that's just me doing my due diligence, like doing what I'm supposed to do. You know what's hard to work with? <laughs> what? Kanye West. But, I mean, but... He makes great, like, his work is really, 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 really great because of that. And it's just, like, imagine if imagine if Kanye didn't care and if he was easygoing and, like, had no particulars. Would, would it be no, you're the right. same, you I just know? Think, so I, I listened to his interview with uh, Big Boy, right? And one thing he said is, ugh, it made my skin crawl. Because I, I used to love Kanye West. Mm-hmm. Like, I was one of his biggest fans. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not even proud to say it, like, because... You shouldn't be a fan of nobody like that. But I was one of his biggest fans. Mm-hmm. But I think he said something. Somebody was saying something about a beat. Mm-hmm. Right? And he, like, basically was saying that, like, they shouldn't have said anything because he's Kanye West and everything he makes is great. And I don't, I don't like, I'm never going to say, like, I need to see this camera because everything I do is great. Nah, I want to see it because I want to make sure it's to my standings. Yeah. But that's different to saying everything is great and you can't have a say. Like, to say somebody shouldn't have a say, that's crazy. Like that's insane. Like, who are you? You ain't God, nigga. You just suck my my bad. Oh, oh gosh. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I just feel like when people get to a certain level, it's just it's just different. You can't be how helped? they move. If they don't want to, I don't know. Cause you know, just like what you were saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you're going this long, being this great without input, do you really need it at a certain point? I guess it's still a certain way to speak to people. I guess. I guess that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. cause you might, you are, you are right. Like, it's certain times I want to say that, but it's like, nah, that's not respectful. Like, you gotta respect the people you work with. Like, I probably would want to say that, but I probably would never say that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's definitely a thing. I, but like, people don't have coof and they don't know how to like talk, think before they talk to people, and they coof. just say the first thing. I like that word. Where you from? <laughs> that's honestly something my sister used to say I mean, we say it Koof. yeah you need to have some koof about you it sounds funny when you say it though because i'm from baltimore so like <laughs> you know when anything i gotta like pronounce or enunciate is going to be crazy like i know y'all let it too do shit oh wait what did you just say do i say it again the, say two you want cash at me all right. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, shit, I'm about, not about to entertain you for free. Though. I'm just saying that was I didn't I was literally thinking when you said that, like, what does a Baltimore accent sound like? And then you said that, and I was like, <laughs> what part of New York are you from? I'm from Harlem. Harlem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know nothing about Harlem. So. Oh, uptown. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about Harlem, but yo, yo, you know what's funny? I don't think I've heard a lot of R and B artists. Out of Harlem. It's like a bunch of like drill and like kill each other music up there. This is true. There is a lot of drill and kill each other music. How is like being an R&B artist coming from like New York? Harlem specifically. Yeah. What? Before you ask, I'm sorry. Where's the mecca of hip hop? Is it Harlem or? What would you say? There's a bunch of young niggas in here. They don't know. The Bronx is the mecca. What? No. (laughs) The the Bronx Bronx? is the Bronx. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Bronx, the Bronx. Okay, I okay. I thought it was gonna be like Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So the Bronx was the is the is the mecca of hip hop. Okay. Mm. 
but it's New York anyway. So being an R and B artist coming out of New York, like mm-hmm. how is that? It's definitely like a lot of, especially when I was first starting, like a lot of being like the only girl on the lineup and like just doing hood shit, like singing at like stuff that you're not supposed to be singing at. Um, but yeah, I think it's just it's just a little bit. It's very different from like other cities, and I I do find myself coming to other cities, um, just because I feel like R and B is a little bit more appreciated, mm-hmm. especially like in the South. Um, but yeah, I mean it's cool. I think it adds like a a certain spicy like undertone to my music um, that I can appreciate. I told you I don't like talking about music, but now I'm intrigued. <laughs> really. Because that's something that like a lot of like up and coming artists go through, like opening for artists. Yeah. But it be the wrong shit. Yeah. Especially like well, who we just seen was it Ari Lennox? She opened for Raw Wave or something. Oh yeah, I did see that. And then she got on the internet like just crying about how they yeah. didn't appreciate her. Why are you opening for Raw, Raw Wave? That makes no sense. But whatever. Your experience, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of those shows when you were opening for like you was opening for drill rappers or rappers. I mean, not necessarily drill rappers. But, yeah, like rappers. I feel like I have, I don't know. I've done so many random shows, probably. Why do artists do that? You just got to do it. That's, like, part of the thing, too, why I was doing it is because it kind of gets you out of your comfort zone. Like, I could do any type of show, anywhere, anything, like, just jump on any type of stage because of those situations. Like, and I've been doing that for years where it's just, like, Shows that you should that you would not think to put me on, like I'm just doing it. Like why not? You know? But it's like kinda like counterproductive though. But it's also artist development. You know? Mm. Like I feel like like just I don't know. You know how like when, when people are in acting school, a lot of the training that they do is like stuff that makes you uncomfortable, like quacking like a duck and like um, jumping up and down for thirty minutes, or like just being you had to do weird. This I mean, I've taken acting classes, but I, I. But that's kind of the protocol is to like do things that make you feel awkward and like uncomfortable, so that you're willing to do anything and you don't really feel uncomfortable doing it. So, so I think that's kind of the equivalent of that. At least for me, that's what it felt like. Because it's like because I've done those things where it was like so far outside my comfort zone, where I've done like sold out shows where the crowd was looking at me like. What is going on? Like, I opened up for Travis Scott one time. Exactly. You could just you could just imagine how that was. And it was, like, huge, but they were all, like... And you telling me that you love your team. Okay, first of all, <laughs> my team, my team did not get me that. They reached out to me, and I wanted to do it. It was fun, and it was, like, artist development. And a lot of the shows that I was doing that was like that... It was before I had any music out. So I was just like getting my hands dirty and learning how to perform because that's also very important. And I feel like it's a lost art is people don't know how to perform and they don't care to know how to perform. That's a fact. You know? That's true. You're right. Because it's right. bigger than just like, oh, what does this opportunity do for me? It's like, is this opportunity going to make me better and like a stronger performer and like, you know? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I'm not mad at that. But let's go back to this quite like a duck thing. Because you was on All-American, right? Yeah. So I'm assuming you took uh, acting classes during that time? I, no, I took acting class. I mean, I've always been in acting classes. I started acting when I was like nine. Oh, shit. Like, you're like a real actress actress. Like, you like... I mean, I didn't really book things, but I had an agent. I got my first agent when I was nine. I was doing a lot of voiceover things. This story gets more interesting the more we talk. Like, hold up. Like, <laughs> shit. Like, well, wait. What's going on? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> my side quest. Like, oh, shit. Like, Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? Like, wait, huh? He was nine doing like it was like voiceovers, voiceover stuff. Yeah, like just just random stuff. It was a lot of auditioning, like for commercials and like just stuff. But I was in a lot of acting classes at the time. That's how I got my first agent because I was in an acting class, and then that's how agents find talent through acting classes. You know? So how did All American come across? I mean, I got a new agent. Um, but if you wasn't like acting, year. I'm sorry, just, just painting the picture for the people. Mm-hmm. If you're not acting. You acting at nine, but you wasn't really acting any other time. No, I acted. I got my first agent at nine, and then I had my agent for like four years, Mm -hmm. and then um, I had to get a new agent because they were like a kid. It was like a kid agent, so when I was like a teenager, it was kind of weird territory. 
Um, and then I was kind of just doing like auditions on my own, like just just from word of mouth and knowing people. Like I did a few auditions for like BT and stuff. Um, and then did when, you land Indy? No. So I'm. I guess my. Yeah. Maybe I need to ask how old you are because I'm saying like from nine to I don't know however old you are. Yeah. If you're not landing anything, why are you wasting your time? I mean, I was auditioning for things though. Okay. So it was like like I had like three auditions a week. And it was also still development, like me learning how to do it. And so like, you had dreams of being an actress, like that's what you wanted to do. I mean, I enjoyed it. And even like how I think of acting now, even if I have an audition, I don't really take it that deep if I don't get it. Like it's a waste of time because like my mindset with it is like I still got to play that character for like an hour, even if it's in the audition. Like I still got to do it and like have fun with it. I just, I always saw like acting as a hobby. Like it was just like a fun thing that I do. You know. So how did you get into music then? I just, just always done both at the same time. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So how did All American? I'm just okay, I'm, I'm so getting to know you at this point. All American. I got a new agent when I graduated from high school, mm -hmm. and I was auditioning for like a year and booking nothing, and um. Yeah, and then I just I got an audition for All American, and as soon as I read it, I was like I. I was like, I, I kind of already knew I got it because it just, I resonated with the character so much. Um, yeah, and then I submitted it and then they reached out to me like two days later and was like, we need to be in LA. Tomorrow. Who was it, Who was your character? Her name was Jen. She's like a drug addict. How long How long were you her? I was her for uh, about a year. How many, is that just one season? Yeah, just one season. That's, so you had a reoccurring part? Mm -hmm, yeah. Who were you like? Attached to you, um, Olivia. Do you know that? But she she played like the sister. What season is this? I was on season four. I probably wouldn't remember. Yeah, I feel like I stopped watching All American after season two. <laughs> how long was All American? How long? How long? It's still on. What? I know. I mean, oh, and all and all and, uh, and not to be funny. Mm -hmm. in all seriousness, when I, when I watched it for the first two, it was good. So I can see why it's still on. Yeah. Wow. So you and that was a big show. Yeah. So like you got like fans like people still coming to you like yo you the girl from All yeah American? yeah <laughs> how much do people come up to you and say you're the girl from All American versus saying you're Journey Montana I mean honestly that was a big shift and that was like a big deal for me so when I first did All American people would stop me a lot like especially like in the airport and stuff like where it was like a busy busy places like they would stop me a lot and be like oh my gosh you're Jen from All American or like whatever. And then I remember I put out bad decisions and that kind of had its moment. And then people started stopping me like, oh, you're Johnny Montana, you sing bad decisions and da da da. Or they would know both, um, which was which was cool. So now that you're here, yeah. if you had to choose one, what is a must and which one you can put on a back burner and say forget? If you had to. Music is definitely a must. Acting I would put on the back burner. Because it's just like a fun thing. Like I, I feel no ways about how the acting goes. It's just like a if it does, if it doesn't, I don't I don't really care too much. But my music is like what I care most about. Okay. Is it annoying when more people or you catch more people or, or during that time mm -hmm. filming All American, when people are coming to you like you're Jen from All American, but not Journey Montana? Um, I feel like once I got a taste of like people knowing me for my music, which is like mostly how it is now. But once I got, I started getting that more often, it started to be like, okay, you know, like, here's okay. My, here's my single. I mean, Just like a little bit. But like, honestly, I didn't mind because the whole thing was like, if people are finding me from this, then it, they're just a click away from my music, you know? That's a fact. Or is it? Because there's so many people that like act, that they act because they want to get... Um, recognized for singing or that music and then they just never go back like even i'm thinking of uh let's say dc young fly mm -hmm. right he's like i don't know if you know this but he can i think he can sing oh he's really good. i what? didn't know that yeah, he's talented as hell oh wow but i think acting has gone so well for him mm -hmm. he put it on the back right now again i don't know mm -hmm. and i want to be yeah. as respectful as possible but it seems that way it's like man acting is going so well that he has to put that first because that's was probably paying the bills yeah, I feel like that's a thing, but I feel like I had to make that decision early on. And there's also the opposite too. Like think of like Drake. He that's was right. acting and he quit to make music. Mm -hmm. Or like 
at least put it on the back burner. I think DDG did something similar, right? I'm not sure. Because he was super, like, he's like the goat to the YouTube community. Oh, like with YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he does both But he, I was about to say, I think he, him, and and I might be going out on ledge, him and Jake Paul, they are probably, like, the greatest. And it's another singer, Queen Naja, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's nowhere near, like, DDG, in my perspective. Okay. I think DDG and Jake Paul... Are like kings of like transition. Okay. Like, cause DDG make good music. You don't like it? No, I've never, I've never listened. I've You've never, never heard, heard DDG music? Oh, DDG. Okay, I've heard like one song. Yeah, and it's it's solid. Yeah, it makes some good. I, I think it made it to my playlist, but I think it was featuring like Queen Naja. Probably so. Probably yeah. so. Oh, so you're a Queen Naja fan? Yeah, I, I like her. Okay. okay. I mean, I'm more of like an R and B head. I don't really listen to rap a lot. Mm, okay. I don't really listen. I'm 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 just weird. Like I'll drive. I go on long drives. I don't listen to nothing. You don't listen to anything? I need shut Are you up. okay? <laughs> hey, I might be a little just, I might have to get checked out. You just out. drive in silence? Hey. Oh my gosh, that's depressing. Do you do that when there's people in the car too? Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Oh my gosh. I know there's people there, I know people who like cannot drive in silence. Oh yeah, I, bro. I just man, Do- to be honest, those are the people you should watch out for because they probably more crazy than I am. If you can't drive, in, if you can't sit in silence, oh nah, it's something you, you run away from, buddy. <laughs> like me, at least I can sit with myself. <laughs> like if you can't sit in silence, you might have to watch them more than you got to watch me. Maybe. I'm just saying. But like, I feel like some people do it because they'll fall asleep. Okay. I don't know. I don't drive. You don't drive. No. At all? No. I'm just a... Oh, you like a passion's a princess. Ain't that what they call it? <laughs> I guess. So, if you got a husband, right? Or a boyfriend or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he, and he wanted you to drive. He wanted me to drive? Yeah. What do you mean? Wait, wait. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying. You can't even I'm just saying to question. like what like, What does that mean? Like drive, huh? What's that? But, like, what do you mean? So I had a girl Like, he my, wanted me to drive. Yeah, like, I had a girl come on my podcast. She said that she's a passionate princess. And, like, the manly thing is to drive. And she, to be on a passenger seat while he drive. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like it would be the safer thing. Like, Oh, so you know what? So you so you know women can't drive then? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Not too much. I didn't say that. I'm just saying Why would I you can't. I'm just saying I can't drive. Oh, you can't drive? I'm not talking about women. I'm just talking about me. Okay. Yeah. Wait, how old are you? You could you drink? Yeah, I'm 21. Okay, I was making sure. Like, wait, yeah. what's going on? You can't drive. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make a. Hey, I'm just making sure. Making sure. Yeah, I just have had like, like it was like I almost went and like did it, and then I just was like, I don't want to. Mm. Hey. Yeah. Let's talk more about journey real quick before we get out of here. Okay. How are you feeling? Walking it again, this is gonna drop, it's gonna be already out. But let's give the audience a real life uh like understanding of your mind. How do you feel about the drop it? It not being out right now. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling coming into this season? I'm really excited because I really, really, really like this music. I really believe in it. Um, I feel like it's really great and elevated and mm. I just love when I'm doing my best, regardless of how it's received. Like, it's just a great feeling, like, doing my best. Wow, that's great, because that was going to be the next question, but you answered it. What? I was wondering, like, how much do you like it? Because you said you liked it at first, right, before you said you love. And I was curious to know, like, is it like or is it love? Because what happens, do you still feel the same way when you drop that music? And we're not going to wish this on you, but... Nobody likes it. Do you still feel that same excitement? Do you still feel that same uh, joy for the music? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Especially because that's kind of irrelevant. Because there's, like, even if you think of, like, the age of, like, TikTok and stuff, there's stuff that have that has come out 10, 15 years ago and is just now having the moment that it should have. Like, even if you think of, like, Justine Sky, like, Collide, that song came out, like, almost 10 years ago. Mm. And it just went number one on TikTok. Like, just, like, put her on the charts. Um, It's kind of irrelevant, you know? You can't really base the value of something on that. 
Mm. Because especially nowadays, because there's so much music out and it's so hard to like, I don't know, be seen sometimes. Um, you can't like have your validation be in that. That's that's great. Like that's yeah. awesome that you think that way. Like yeah. really, it, you do you understand? Like you, you say you're 21, right? Mm -hmm. It's people at 31, 41 who still can't come to terms with their their self and their soul to understand that you just gotta put it out, and when it's time, it's time. Yeah, exactly. I just feel like the only thing I need to focus on right now is being consistent and like pouring into myself and and just growing as a person and keeping my head on straight and yeah the other stuff has nothing to do with me i can't control those things so that don't have nothing to do with me well that's refreshing to hear you say that for real. oh no this is good man oh, good. what is there anything else that we didn't hit on any missed opportunities well my album is coming out talk about it in august what's it i thought y'all said it was uh y'all didn't know the date it's gonna be like august Girl, you don't know about this music thing. No, that <laughs> towards the end of the year, yeah. I'm just late saying. summer. You are you signed to anyway? Yeah. <sighs> what? You got a lot to learn. <laughs> Since coming out, it's going to be August. So okay. Okay. Hopefully. Well, <laughs> nah, my album is it's coming fine, out. My album is coming out soon. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Your <laughs> album is about astrology. No. I mean, it's about... It's called Eclipse. So it's like about... My my last EP was called Star Girl. Why are you so into astrology like this? I mean, I'm not... I just really like the, the stars, stars and the moon. And the moon. Shut up. <laughs> I'm dead. I just like space. I just like to be free. No, you know what it is. Okay, so when I did Star Girl... Um, when I did Star Girl, I was just thinking about something that really re represented how I was feeling and like what the music meant. Mm -hmm. And like I honestly I honestly just felt like the stars in the sky you really yeah. so you represented. Felt free. Like I no, I felt I felt like I was this is kind of where the explanation of Star Girl comes in. I felt like I was being seen. I felt like it was very bright, it was very chaos, but it was also like really dark and I was by myself and I was isolated and like far away and mm. feeling lost and stuff like that because I feel like when I was writing Stargirl, it was like when I first started having things like move and so I was in the club a lot and I was outside every night and like just, it was very mixy and it was a lot for me. So it's a lot of mixed emotions. You think you're over that? Yeah, I think I've adjusted. And I and I've set more boundaries because I think at the time I didn't understand what I was doing to to set boundaries, but yeah, now I have I have boundaries like I'm not going to be that old nigga, but it's so dope like talking to like younger people. Mm -hmm. Because like like you like you have no idea, but How <laughs> you say that like you're like old? Are you like old? I say that like I'm like what? Like you're old. Like what? What's old? Are you 55? <laughs> You cap. You just said that because you knew that was the safe answer. No, I'm dead serious. You're, and that's still not even that old to me. Oh, brother. <laughs> I'm just. That's how I. What's old? Give, I just told you. How old you think I, I am? I don't know. Like late twenties. Thank you. Oh, what, you're in your thirties. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean that. Same difference. I mean, my sister's in her thirties, and I would never call her old. I wouldn't let nobody call her old because she's okay. not. Little sis, you better boss up on these bitches. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> no, bro, this is good. I appreciate you pulling up. This is good. For the people that don't know, um, let them know how to follow you and how to support all of your music. Okay, look at that camera. That one. Um, look at this one. This one? No, this one. Okay, I was supposed to do that. How am I supposed to do that? That's um, <laughs> Y'all are funny. Uh, my name is Journey Montana. You can find me on everything at Journey Montana, J-O-U-R-N-E-Y-M-O-N-T-A-N-A. -N -N this is good, man. Mr. J Hill, make sure y'all support Journey Montana, man. Dope individual, as you guys can see. Um, head on straight. Music is good. I did check it out. I did. I'm not lying. I checked it out, guys. It's good. Support Journey Montana, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is right. We out. That was good, man. How long was that? <laughs>